live to you tonight. That's what you're watching tonight. This is the show where I take on current events. I, but tonight we have a, a wonderful treat because tonight we are going to finally, once and for all, debunk the hoax, the fraud that has been perpetrated on our children, on our society, on the way that we live, on everything. It's justified the absolute takeover of our liberties. Of course, I'm discussing the global warming hysteria. And I have actual scientists on the show tonight who will tell you exactly what's going on with our weather and whether or not it really is the world is going to come to an end if we don't, you know, watch our carbon footprint. So tonight we have with us Dr. Gordon Folks, and he is a physicist, and he will be sharing this. Gordon, say hello to everybody. Hello. <laughs> And we have somebody who's very familiar with being in front of the camera, Chuck Weiss, former, uh, he is a meteorologist, and you were a weatherman or a meteorologist, what do you, would you call it when you were on television? Well, meteorologist is a good, I guess a good uh, word to use, that's fair. Well, great, yeah, well, and, and where, I've been on your where show did before, you, so. yes, you have, he, Chuck is a, is a second timer. So, um, you, where were you uh, practicing the art of delivering the weather? on television? Uh, plenty of places. I spent, uh, what, 11 years here in Portland uh, on KOIN and then up in Seattle at King TV, King Broadcasting. I was out in Minneapolis at WCCO uh, Television working with Mike Fairborn, who used to work at KGW here in Portland. So a good uh, long stint in broadcasting, a total probably of around, oh, what is it, 18, 20 years? Yeah, and we've got a We've got a blue screen behind us, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. we do. Did you ever work with a blue screen when you were doing I did. Work? Chroma key was, uh, was uh, the, the word of the day. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you explain to everybody how chroma key works? Well, it's just a, it's a background that, that, that they put uh, uh, in back of you to where you can basically have images come up. They're electronic images. And then you're, you're pointing to simply a, a, a colored background. And then you use a monitor where the, uh, the data comes up at to be able to reference it with your hand or pointer whatever you're going to use. You have to watch the screen. You, you have to watch the monitor to be able to reference the data, correct? Yeah, like we've got a super close up right now. No, now we're all back. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a big shout out to our wonderful crew we've got here. We've got um, Paul Wade and Tony Pugh and, oh my gosh, you guys have to give me a wonderful nice fellow's name. He's got an unusual name. Uh, we've got a wonderful other volunteer here. So, give it to me on the teleprompter and I'll, I'll, I'll give you some um, some Props there. All right, and so let's get down to it. Um, okay. Oh, I did want to partly say that because uh, if you notice the chroma key, there's I he didn't Gordon didn't get the word the email about not wearing blue. So blue's the color that it pulls out and it puts everything in. So he's slightly vibrating, but not much because it's a darker blue. So he's, they've done Tony's done a can't fabulous see the Lisa job. Michael sign, sign no, you me. can't see the Lisa <laughs> Michael sign through you. No, but you could see like. You can see like that that uh, cityscape behind you. I think a little bit, but <clears throat> and anyway, let's talk about the cityscape of Portland. And this, I believe, is the epicenter of the global warming hoax. Tell us what happened. We had news about global warming hysteria right here in River City from today. What happened? Who wants to share with that? Well, uh, today the uh, city of Portland. I guess the uh, the the city councilors passed the uh, climate plan for the city of Portland. I mean, this thing is, it's awful. I've looked at it, it's going to accomplish absolutely nothing. Uh, because the whole idea, uh, Lisa, behind this is it's to reduce your carbon footprint, it's to start uh, uh, supposedly turning the thermostat down in the climate, and the fact of the matter is, there's nothing these people are going to do in the small amount of things that they propose and want the public to engage in that will actually reduce the free air CO2 concentration at all. It's completely fraudulent. And I pointed this out to the Oregon Global Warming Commission. I pointed it out to Dean Mark Abbott at Oregon State University. Where that's the university I studied atmospheric science under. I did some off-the-cuff calculations, and I sent the results to him. And I told him, uh, Mark, you know, the Climate Action Plan, the Oregon Global Warming Commission's recommendations on reducing carbon emissions will do absolutely nothing because it doesn't matter. Oregon emits 68 million metric tons. That was in the Oregon Global Warming Commission's report. Mm -hmm. And you could, what I showed in my calculations were that you could 
you could wipe that entire 68 million metric tons of CO2 per year out of the atmosphere, and it wouldn't make a, a, a measurable dent in the upward rise wouldn't of make, CO2. Wouldn't amount to wouldn't no Wouldn't do a thing. Would wouldn't do well, a thing. But Chuck, amount, we, we want to be, be not too technical, because we've got a wide audience that's not as brilliant as the two of you guys are. <laughs> but yeah, it, it basically, I think, and tell me if, what you guys think. I'm going to look at it. You guys are the scientists. I'm the politician. I'm running for Congress, and I want to get rid of a, a lot of this stuff. I want to get rid of the EPA and all these these groups because you don't realize because it sounds so beautiful. You know, who doesn't want to save the planet? Who doesn't want to leave it better and cleaner than we have arrived with it? But you know what? How arrogant. I mean, really? Do we really think that we this one species that occupies about one percent of the Earth's surface is really gonna is really gonna yeah yeah think about it? Come on, it doesn't make sense. But they're trying; they get to justify all their robbery of your liberties, all their their uh, onerous regulations and stipulations and everything that government puts on you over every aspect of your life. Because after all, it'll save the planet, right? So well, we must be doing something right, though, Lisa, because the temperature's been going down for the last 20 years. <laughs> so maybe yeah. living right here is, is the way we yeah. need to be. Is it been Who cares down, about the carbon dioxide? Is it, it just, just going down here in, in, in Oregon, in the Northwest? Or tell us a little bit about in, what the temperature, make the, it real easy for the, the, the folks Pacific at home to see. In the Pacific Northwest, the temperature has been trending downward, which doesn't mean it's been going downward. It means it's been trending downward, sometimes up a bit, sometimes down a bit, but overall, on the average, for the last 20 years. That's from Mark Albright, former uh, uh, climatologist for the state of Washington. That's from Cliff Mass, who was not on our side in the global warming battles. And it's also from George Taylor. In other words, the whole region has been getting colder because the Pacific Ocean uh, near us has been getting colder. So indeed, um, carbon dioxide hasn't been going down, but our temperatures have been going down. And in fact, that's a general trend across the United States for about the last 15 years. Now, Do you have Chuck a slide is, on here that did well, that? Well, these are Chuck's this slides, so we don't I'm looking for one that would show the uh, the current. Tr well, this is this this is the global. I was right. looking for the regional one, but this is one that, that shows. Make that as big as possible so that right. people the can see it. You should double click on it. The globe is a different uh, matter. The global temperature has not uh, okay. gone down much. It's been pretty much. Okay, in can the we go to situation. can we go to the the screen the 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 whatever bright eye? There we go. So go ahead and talk about that. Okay, well, you can see there the global temperature uh, is about a tenth of a degree above the 30-year uh, 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 average as of uh, uh, last month. It is uh, uh, up from the previous month, which was about the same as the month before that, which was down from the month before that. So we've been hovering right around a zero anomaly, in other words, uh, uh, right on the average for the last 30 years, which is amazing. And, and if you look over the last 10 years, you see that the temperature has varied quite a bit, but it's varied uh, on, uh, about uh, essentially a status situation, it's essentially a flat uh, line. And, and another thing that's important to, uh, to mention here, uh, Lisa, is uh, the regional data. This is the global temperatures now off the satellite system that were measured at the University of Alabama at Huntsville. But the local data, uh, particularly in the northwest and all across the 48 lower states, the trend is not actually flat like it shows in the global temperatures because this data set here con uh, contains the oceans. Uh, and if you add those in, uh, the oceans have more mobile heat ability uh, and ability to absorb heat and energy from the sun. And uh, they change slowly. There's a thermal inertia thing involved there where if heat's absorbed, it takes longer to get rid of it. The lands respond quicker. And there's already been a change since 1998 that shows over the 48 lower states and here in Oregon, the temperatures have trended down. And uh, when uh, the uh, Oregon State people did their climate presentation as a rebuttal to what we did in January, mm -hmm. They, they were making, uh, uh, basically trying to minimize the temperature hiatus of the last uh, 10 years and the fact that temperatures regionally had, had been declining. And, uh, and uh, the fact of the matter is, if you take a look uh, at what Phil Moat and the Oregon, or the Climate Impacts Group and other uh, people that support the climate modeling, which is completely frivolous, it doesn't work. If you take a look at their, their, their global temperature or their or temperature forecasts and the amount of error in them. Mr. Moat told us that the temperature was going to go up in the last 10 years by one degree Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. It's actually gone down 1.61, which makes the weather's his weather's not cooperating. For it's Mr. not. Moat, is that? It's not cooperating, <laughs> and uh, the error that makes his error 2.61 degrees in just 10 years. 
Oh my gosh. Well, I think we've seen that that graph enough, and maybe we have some other graphs that we want to show, or well, you want to go well, back this, to us? Th this is the. Uh, this oh wait, no. Go ahead. This, this is well, good. Th this is what I was saying about the okay. continuous contiguous 48 lower states. This is from the uh, National Climatic Data Center, and it shows that uh, between. Uh, uh, the 1998 to 2010 trend, and I picked those years because you have an equal number of El Ninos and La Ninas to get rid of that signal. The temperature had fallen 9.95 degrees Fahrenheit across the entire country. Now, if CO2 is warming the climate, how do you uh, reconcile that with what the climate modeling is saying and, and the physics behind what they claim is causing the warming? You're getting the exact opposite effect. It's cooling when the modeling says it's going to be warming. They dismiss this hiatus but it's an important thing to have to reconcile because the modeling didn't catch this and that's what's really significant about it. It tells you by just looking at the raw data there are serious issues with climate modeling. Of course, I've never subscribed to it anyway. But There's too many variables that you can't predict, well, isn't that there, right? With most scientific things you can't you can't can't really come up with a conclusion unless you have you can keep a certain amount of variables con con constant, right? To well, measure it, isn't it kind of hard to do? How, how do you even do this modeling? You want to go back to us there? That's Or do you want to do you have another? Well, uh, that, that's fine for now. We can come okay, back to us. Okay, let's go. All right, there we are. We're, We're back. <laughs> so anyway, what you're about to say? I was just going to say that the climate codes are not solutions of the basic physics. That's the inherent problem with them. The basic physics is too complicated to try and solve as one problem. So they try and solve it piecemeal. But then they get into essentially a video game sort of situation where the, um, the, they solve portions of it and then they try and put the portions together and it becomes rather like a video game or rather like a movie such as Star Wars where you have these very interesting characters that obey certain laws of physics but they're all make-believe and what is even more make-believe is the story that they tie around them. And uh, uh, as a consequence, the, the uh, well, Andrea Schmittner at uh, uh, Oregon State likes to say that the climate models have are based on physical principles and they have skill. Yes, they have skill, but in very narrow areas. The, the problem of combining them is where they fall apart. These models have many uh, uh, arbitrary parameters from which they can uh, 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 meet uh, or match any existing data uh, much as a, uh, as a lookup table, as a, as a data fit. And then they turn around and say, well, but look how well they fit the data. Well, but that's just what they did. I mean, the, the, the logic is circular here, and it's, it's a great problem. These climate codes are uh, um, made to deceive us. They're good for entertainment. They, they are extremely expensive, but they don't do as well as my climate model, which simply says T equals a constant. <laughs> and uh, yeah. that is, that's the two-bit yeah. climate model, and it's accurate for the last uh, uh, 10 or, uh, or more years. If you want a little more complexity, we can put in the, uh, the ocean cycles and uh, um, the solar cycle for very little more and come up with something that beats all of these billion-dollar climate codes hands down. So, so essentially, they're, they're making up their this this hysteria this crisis they're, they're fooling themselves they're fooling they're themselves doing. and they're and they're uh, they're on the payroll of some some oh, yes. some people that, that that have quite a profit motive in scaring you into thinking that you have to do this that and the other thing in order to save the planet and, and limit your well, carbon footprint let, 